Hey, this is Paul Stolt from Super Easy Apps. Welcome back. We are working on the UI. So we mocked some stuff up just by grabbing the image assets and dragging them onto the canvas. Now we really wanna work on positioning them and then we will work on sort of tweaking the UI, customizing our button and customizing the font. So let's get started with that. We're trying to make the UI look something like this. So we're gonna drag around these elements and just sort of align them in Xcode. And one of the things that we're gonna see here is the, the layout order uh, does matter. So I can't actually edit this label. You'll see that when you try to click on it, it will zoom in, zoom out. This is a common beginner mistake with Xcode. You actually need to make sure that the label's at the very bottom of the list on your left side. And if you don't see this, click on this panel to hide and show. And you should be able to see your current view, which is the canvas that we're working in and move any of your labels down to the bottom. The first thing that you add is always gonna be on the, the bottom of the layout hierarchy, which means that that's going to be covered by anything on top of it. So if I move something down and I put the label above it, you'll see that the label is masked and it's a little bit faded because of this graphic. All right, so we want the labels all on the top of our UI. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the, the layout to get an approximate movement and I'm gonna scroll this down a little bit so it's approximately the same uh, position as this is over on the left so that we can sort of keep things in a similar fashion. I'm gonna move this label out of the way for now. I want to first center this element and I'm gonna drag it until I see it in the center. And depending on where I drag it, I'll see it center to other elements. So you have to be careful when you're doing this that you're centering to the actual screen. And I love to use the keyboard keys. So this will allow me to sort of align it. I can see what it's centered to. I really want the, the line to go from top to bottom. That means it's fully centered. If I do this one, we can see that this one's offset a little bit. We move it over a, a, a pixel and it is fixed. The other thing I wanna talk about is when I say pixel, I really mean points. On the iPhone, everything we talk about is in related to to points because we've got retina screens. One of the other things you're gonna see here is sometimes other UI elements are going to cause this to snap. There's a little bit of an issue here as I'm dragging this around. Let's make our, our canvas a little bit bigger. We don't need that sidebar. So I'm just gonna click that button up top to hide the sidebar and we can see more of our UI design. All right, so something is getting sort of stuck here. So I'm just going to move this around and I can use the arrow keys or I can just bring it in. This is gonna give me the standard Apple distance. If I hold the, the option or the alt key and high, hover over things, I can sort of see the layout and how it relates. So there's a standard eight points that we have on iOS in iOS 11, 10, nine. I think it's in all of the iOSs for, for most components. So that's what we're gonna see by default. This design has a little bit thicker, so it's really up to whatever your designer wants you to do that you kind of go along with. And now vertically, we can align this so that it looks a little bit better. I can select all of these using the drag to select, but if you wanna select individual ones, you can hold the shift key and click on them. And if you do need to unselect something, hold the command key and you can unselect those as well. So that allows you to quickly move things around. You can move them off to the side. You can bring them and try to center. Again, we want everything to center with the entire screen, so we should see the line go vertically the entire way. All right, so that looks pretty good. This label is gonna go inside. I'm just gonna type in a default, easy to remember. percentages, so I'm just gonna drag and copy. Now what I'm doing here is I'm holding the Alt key and I'm dragging a copy. Alternatively, you can grab another label from the right side and drag that out and edit it. So let's just get some placeholder content in here. And I'm gonna use that duplicate again to customize this one. So this can be our 10% and we can now see that on the screen. Don't worry too much about the font. We are gonna change things, so things aren't going to be exactly as I have them laid out, but approximately we want things to be in line. Then we can update the fonts. Anytime you change the fonts, the size does change a little bit, or anytime you change the text, the size may change depending on the font that you select. So you might have to readjust after you do the initial placement. All right, so we need one more label down here. I'll just align that to the front. 
So I'm just holding the option key to quickly duplicate. Now this doesn't get a label. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look in our object library. So click on this tab. And if you're not on the grid view, you can toggle between the two with this button that's super quick. And we're looking for a text field for users to enter text. This is something that we'll customize uh, in the next video with all of the fonts. But what we can do is we can hide the text bubble and then we can just adjust this. Let's make this 100. So that's gonna work for our example. Because I hid the bubble, so it doesn't look like a normal text field, the size is changing. One of the ways that we can fix that if you go to editor and then the size to fit content, that's command equals, that will resize the elements so that it should work. And if I hide those bubbles to match our design so that it's sort of bubbleless, then we'll see that it's not quite right. So I'll do command equals after I've selected it, it gets a lot smaller. So I'm just gonna throw that in right here on the right and sort of center it. We'll fix the font in the, the next lesson. Then we've got this bottom bar. Let's just adjust this so that this is now in the center. And this sort of needs to be right in this area. I think this is offset a little bit. So actually I should have probably made sure that this was center and use the arrow keys to fix that alignment. And I think that is center when we see the line sort of match up. This looks like it's off center. So we move it over a little bit and we can double check these positions. There is gonna be a little bit of an offset with these graphics cause they're not pixel perfect, but they're pretty close. So we're gonna see some offsets and that's okay. One, one point isn't too bad for your first app and we'll just fix this one right there. So that is the, the basic layout of the app. We now have everything we need to, to sort of move forward. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the simulator. I'm gonna to switch to the iPhone 8. Anytime you open an Xcode project, it seems to default to your device and then it also defaults to the bigger simulators. So we'll go with that. We'll just hit the play button and get started. And that will slowly boot up. Depending on how fast your machine is, it will boot up quicker. And we can see our layout is now on the device. So that's how to quickly lay out the app and run it on an iPhone 8 simulator. In the next video, I'm gonna go over customizing the fonts. And then after that, we will get into actually fixing this to be a button. So right now it's just an image, it's not interactive. We need to fix that. So let's get started with the fonts in the next video. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you wanna download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below, you can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's gonna send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects is gonna be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm gonna be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm gonna be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.